Hi, I'm Nate and you're watching Photo Learningism. Let's do a character animation inside Glaxonomate and see how easy this can be for working on your characters and adding motion. I've already started a project here from one of the templates. This is an HD aspect ratio and also uh, using 30 frames per second. Those are kind of important because it impacts how we work. First thing I'm gonna do is actually go into document and then timing. And I don't really need 90 frames for this exercise. I'm just gonna do 30. That automatically calculates I'm gonna need one second because it's 30 frames a second. There are some options down here just in case where if you had done work beyond where you're about to scale to, it gives you options on how to deal with that. I'm just gonna do the trim extra frames, which just tax off whatever that is and disregard it because I don't need them. I am going to, first of all, draw, just so we can see a little better what we're gonna do because the background is transparent, get a little distracting for what we're doing. So that's just for aesthetics at this point. I'm going to go to File, Add Image. And I wish there was a bulk import option. There's not yet. Uh, so you do have to do this one piece at a time, but it's not so bad. Uh, so I'm just gonna do that three times. I have the body and then I separated out the legs. You could do this really for any appendage that you want to do. They just need to be separate so you can animate them separately in this way. All right, so I've got two legs and I've got a man. What I'm gonna do here first is actually take all those pieces in the lower right here and drag them on top of the layer. And what that does is it now groups them. Uh, so the reason that's important is I'm just gonna bring the layer on top of the rectangle here so we can see it, okay. The reason that's important is so that we can move all the pieces uniformly if we want to. Uh, so we want the freedom to do both. We want to be able to move each limb that we want to control and then the whole body uniformly. So now that I have this, I'm highlighting the layer. I'm just going to relocate this guy over and I'm going to make him just a little bit bigger. That's using the control and then click. Uh, just to resize him and keep the aspect ratio. Now, what we can do is start doing the individual pieces. So the two tips on here, by the way, when I select a thing, is you have the plus over here, which just moves the entire layer, the, well, the object rather, layers or groups in this, this tool. And this one up here will rotate it. So that's the one that we're gonna be focusing on here to use for the legs. All right, now very important, what I got to do is I'm going to come down here and start recording. So it captures the motion I'm about to do. First thing I'm also going to do is take this X. This is the pivot point, and that's important for rotation because the joints need to swing from something. So I'm going to park that right on the hip here. And then I'm going to move to the end because we're just going to make this one motion. I'm going to use the rotation. This is our right leg, so we're gonna bring that back like that. Maybe step it forward just a hair. And that part is done. Now I'm gonna flip over here to the left leg and do a similar thing. I'm gonna go back to the starting frame at zero. I'm going to move that X in the middle to the hip to connect it to where it should swing. And then I'm gonna drag the scrubber out to the 30 frame and rotate that one two so now i'm done i'm going to stop the recorder and we can see we have some animation but you'll also notice there's this funny thing where the leg goes over instead of under i've noticed i think this is just some kind of system assumption where it looks for the shortest path not necessarily the direction so that's okay though it's easy to overcome all right so what we're going to do then is i'm going to cue us back up on frame zero uh, we know that to be, uh, let's see, I think that is the left leg that has given us trouble. So, again, cue it up. I'm going to put the recorder back on, and I am going to go to the end frame, and I have to go in the properties for rotation. Uh, left leg, it's already up here for me. Transform, and then rotation. And this value, yeah, is assuming a positive. So. You have to kind of guess initially what you're going to do. We have to give it a negative value, essentially, so it goes the other way. So I'm just going to guess we need about negative 60 to start. It's not going to be perfect. So I'm going to keep kind of 
moving it up to what seems appropriate, if I take it off the negative value, it will start moving into the positive again. And once we get to the point we want, again, this is very easy and fast. Um, doesn't really take a lot of work to, to get this tweaked. That's pretty good. And then that is now corrected. I'm gonna turn the recorder off. And now we get that motion that we're after. Now, I'm gonna play this. And you can see that motion. So that was nice and easy. Uh, again, remember that you can do a lot by keeping both things separate so you can animate legs like I've done and grouping them with the layers so that you can actually uniformly move the whole thing if you want to. One last proof of that, I'm gonna stop the play here, is I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna record, I'm gonna go tech to layer here. I'm gonna take this whole object, we're gonna move it off camera and then gonna go to the end frame 30 we're gonna come over here and then roll back Unif whoop. uniformly make him a little bigger just so he's kind of traveled some uh, within the perspective and stop let's put us back to fit here and you can see now what's going on So now it moves across. And I didn't have to animate each piece individually because I can just animate the layer, which accounts for all of them together. So pretty awesome. Keeps things uh, interesting and speeds things up in a big way because you can control them both ways. Once again, this tool is Glaxnimate and it is a very powerful animation tool, really. There's tons of stuff you can do. I've seen this used creatively for presentations and I'm just doing character animation now. You can do simple object animation to kind of add different flow and interest into screen backgrounds. There's a lot you can do with this, so it's definitely worth exploring. If this was helpful to you, please do give me a thumbs up. Also subscribe if you haven't done that already and leave a comment, ask a question, and I will see you again at the next video. Thank you so much for the support and for watching this video.